You're listening to Sideshow Network. Check out all of our shows at sideshownetwork.tv. Snoop Dogg was making out with Maria. Gross. It was, it was pretty gross. <laughs> uh, kind of took me out of it. I was like, oh, I can understand that. I don't know how I feel about this anymore. I, I feel bad about it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, welcome to the worst collection ever. I'm Sean. And I'm Jen. And uh, we'd like to welcome you to our podcast as we uh, talk about our collection Yay. that is shitty. Uh, Shitty and the worst. Yeah, it's not that great. No, bad. Yeah, it's cr- basically created from a number of, uh, you know, uh, cheap buys mm. that we uh, we find along the way, and the, these two are no different. No. And uh, I believe we're going to start with uh, let's start with the death lock. Okay. Because I feel it's the weaker of the two. Sure. And uh, we're just, this is Deathlock Volume 2. Well, it says Ghost Rider versus Deathlock. But it's Ghost it's de- I know it's, it's, it's Deathlock. It's an issue That's of Deathlock. That's what Death it Lock. says. Uh, number 9. Deathlock number 9. From I think it's, March. It is March 1992. 1992. March 1992. So this is like... I kind of, I when I was picking these uh, podcasts for today, I was thinking that... Uh, It'd be good to pick uh, some '90s ass. Sure, '90s so, ass. So this is a uh, this is '90s ass, yep. pretty much because yep. pretty much because uh, Deathlock is it's not that I don't know he's he's just one of those characters I brought back because he had lots of guns and he was a cyborg and well he's really sad actually. It's really depressing. He's really he's depre- really depressing. I you know I don't know anything about Deathlock, but. From what I read in this book, it's very sad. I feel bad for him. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's a cyborg, and uh, he is he, he is uh, the second Deathlock. There was another one. There was. There was a previous Deathlock, Luther Manning, whose consciousness was up in the cyborg. Previous to this one, and this one is Michael Collins, who uh, I forgot. I forgot the exact origin of how this goes off the top of my head, but you know his consciousness is in. The uh, the cyborg yes. now, and he's you know it's you know, it's, it's kind of like a it was like a thing back in the nineties, early nineties, where it was black dudes with who are military cyborgs? who are cyborg or military those black dudes with military backgrounds getting screwed over by the man by the man by by whoever and being forced into. Uh, Bodies, or you know, or into you know, into scenarios, into you know, alternate lives that mm-hmm. totally were just fucked up, fucked up. Like, yep. um, well, uh, it even says in here, like you know, Michael Collins was like a peace activist and a pacifist and like all this sort of shit, and now he's a weapon of war. Now he's a weapon of war. Which goes against everything he believes in. And he keeps having these weird... Anyway, we should probably start. Yeah. It's just like, because it's like, yeah, there's like him, there's Spawn. Mm. There's another guy. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so basically it starts off with him. I believe he's having like a... He's a, having a, a dream. He's having another nightmare. A nightmare. He's having a dream. And he's standing atop a pile of skulls, as one does. Yes. Um, and he's just like killing things he's just having a murder fest you know and uh he's he's you know, but just, there's another voice in his head that's talking he's to him. getting he's getting messed with us later we find out you know as to what's going on and but like his roommate i don't understand is this guy's roommate see i that's the thing is he's got this dude who, i'm assuming it's this roommate well it's a roommate or a guy that like it, somehow became responsible to hold on to the, to watch after after uh Deathlock. Yeah. So he keeps him in like his apartment, and this guy just you know is like you know since it's the nineties, he's walking around with a boombox, yeah, playing he, snaps, fight the power, right? You know, and, yep. and he offers he offers him a hot offers his Deathlock a hot dog, which I think is hilarious. I actually was hoping he would eat the hot dog, and I'm very sad he did not. Well, he doesn't eat a hot dog though. He's like he's like well, what Robocop. If, he just eats a baby food. Okay, 
That's boring. Well, maybe, maybe you could eat a hot dog. You can't, like, puree a hot dog and, like, make it into baby food? I don't think this guy has a blender. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> he could. It looks, I mean, he looks like he's offering him a hot dog that he was just eating. Like, on that panel. He was just like, have this hot dog that was just in my mouth. <laughs> Well, mm, nom, nom, nom. that's how that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to offer somebody pre-chewed food like a bait, like a bird. But Ow. <laughs> damn it! Oh, I forgot. You can't laugh. <laughs> that hurts. I just had surgery last week, so it hurts when I laugh. Okay, I'm sorry. I have to find stop finding myself so hilarious. <laughs> Okay, I'm better. No, oh, that's sad. Why? Oh, I just said, you know, I don't want you to hurt yourself. I'm okay. By I, being I so will, hilarious. I will splint my abdomen like they told me to do. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing they don't tell you. Laughter hurts you. I have to stop being so funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, I made some oh. joke last night. We were watching some movie and I made some joke last <laughs> Yeah, I forget what you said, but it was really funny. It was a really funny joke. I don't want want to repeat it because it might make you hurt again. I just don't remember what you said, but it was really funny. And I started laughing. And then I was like, ha ha, ow, ha ha, ow, ha ha, ow. Because that's the way you laugh. (laughs) (sighs) Anyway. So, So, yeah, he's like, here, eat this hot dog that was just my So he eats his hot dog and his response is to punch his friend. Which I actually Well, he's like, hey, man, I don't know what's going on. Why don't you get up and, like, rap this song with me? And so he does, and, like, he punches him in the face. Because something's happening where, like, there's another entity inside of Deathlock's head. Yes. That is taken over his body. So he's not acting like his normal cheerful self, I guess. I don't know I don't what really... the thing is. Like, I don't think he's, at, no. he, like, he has, like, a, like he's a robot, and he kind of has, like, this personality. Well, he has, doesn't he have, like, his, like... His personality, and then he also has like the robot, per- like Cyborg has Cyborg's personality, but he also has the robot part, right? And I'm assuming it is the same. He, but it seems know. like something else has like overridden the controls and took and taken over his body. Maybe I think he's which just, is this whatever thing is is living inside of his head and causing well, him these. Well, it ends up being nightmare. Yeah, nightmare the Marvel. Bastard, yeah. and he's like fucking around inside of this guy's head. So, so Deathlock goes out of bounds. Like, yeah, he like punches his friend. He's like, "Fuck you!" and he leaves. Or as he says, "Fight the power." Which yeah, I he think says, it's kind of funny. The power, because he's just kind of for some reason like he's repeating all the stuff that his friend is saying, and it's just kind of whatever. And he's just doing it, you know. And he's traipsing. So he goes out to the Coney Island. And he witnesses a stick up, or I think, and not, I'm confused as to whether or not these are hoodlums sticking up a guy for weed, or if they're sticking up like a Coney Island, like f- uh, farmers market, or I, I don't know. I was really confused about that too because what it looks like is it's just like a bunch of dudes doing a drug deal, and. Deathlock is just like I have to fuck with this, and then for some reason, there's like the fat lady from the sideshow is there. Yeah, she's just kind of running around in the middle of everything here, which is. And she's like, "You should." I mean, the only reason she's there is so she can have the line, "You should be in our freak show," because he's all fucked up looking. Yeah. Um, and then he just walks in and he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna, f- you know, fix this." It's kind of like if you've ever seen that Futurama episode where they have uh, Santa, who is a robot, who's programmed. To see everybody as bad, and he just fucks them up. That's kind of how Deathlock is acting. He's just like yeah. everyone is terrible and like, yeah, you know, just making shit bad. Yeah, yeah, no, he's he's out. Of, he's kind of out of control. Yeah, in this regard. So, I thought that was, uh, I thought that was weird though that the, that the freak show lady's just wandering around. Yeah, I don't really know. Maybe like she's on break. And just yeah. happened to see it. And she was just like, there's not really anything going on at this, this freak show. There's like nobody there. Well, there's, there's only her. Dealers. That's why I think maybe she was just like, oh, I, I've got my 20 minutes. I'm going to like walk over to Starbucks and get myself a Frappuccino. And then I got to come back and do whatever I do as the fat lady. Right. Um, which, what does one do? Like, do you just sit there? You said they go, I'm fat. Watch me eat. And then you mm. do it. I see. 
I think. I don't know. I don't know. I've never been to a free show. I can't actually. Well, we, I mean, didn't you? Isn't it something where it's like, you know, the freak show people, like, they just sit there and they just travel. That's what they do. Yeah. They just travel, but I mean, they do weird shit. Coney Island is one of those things that, like, wouldn't you get a gig there for the summer? Yeah. I've never been to Coney Island. So, uh, but I assume, like, you'd be there for the season, right? Like, if that was your gig, you'd be like, oh, I'm at Coney Island for the whole season. So it's like a seven day a week thing, right? Yeah, it's kind of like when you're a Santa Claus. Yeah, yeah. You know, you have like your your gimmicks that yeah, you do your gig. for. Yeah, gig. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so she's there, and like Deathlock's trying to like not to kill people. I guess he doesn't kill people. I thought he was just straight up killing. I did too, but apparently, like his programmer says, he doesn't kill. Mm. Well, so he goes around not killing these dudes, fat ladies. Running. Still running around His in there. His buddy Jesus shows up and is like, dude, man, what's wrong with you? You punched me in the face after I offered you that delicious hawk dog that had been in my mouth. <laughs> and and then, so... Uh, why doesn't my robot want to eat my hot dog? Yeah, why does my robot friend want to eat this hot dog that was in my face? <laughs> I think I should just do that. I'm just going to, like, offer people food that I'm chewing on. Because that's not gross. I always find that weird. That's a, there's, like, that one uh, commercial where... Uh, it's like that. Uh, what is it? That one with that State Farm commercial with the two guys are sitting in the in tr- in the car, and like the the bison knock starts knocking his inner car, and it starts right. off with these two guys just sitting there eating like one guy's eating like a breakfast sandwich. Just like, hey, you want a bite? I'm like, that's gross. Is that the um? Is that the State Farm commercial where the like is attacking their car? Yeah, it's attacking their car, and they're like, no. he's like, they're like, you know, you know, good neighbor Satan or whatever, and they disappear yeah. and they whatever. But it just starts off because the guy's just sitting there. He's like, hey, you want a bite? I mean, that's weird. Yeah, I, I don't, maybe, I mean, maybe, maybe it's not. I, I offer you a bite of things that I'm eating, but like not. But you're my wife. That's true. I am your wife. But like, I don't know. Would you do it for like your family? For ca- casual acquaintance? No. For like your buddy? For just my like, buddy that I'm driving with? you gotta try this thing. Like, would you break him off a piece if he wanted some? I probably might break him off. I wouldn't offer him. You wouldn't just like eat this, shove this I in your face? Sh- I wouldn't share it like Lady and the Tramp, you know? Mm. That'd be kind of weird. Yeah, but, that's Maybe we should try to eat something like that. Like, maybe that's I, what this guy was trying to do here. He's trying yeah, to offer. Yeah, maybe he, he was he's just. Trying to, he's trying to like, you know what? I think I think I better tell him how I feel. And I think it's time. And we'll do it through this phallic shaped object. This, 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 phallic shaped food product. <laughs> that's, that's, that's where this was going until they decided that, until somebody at Marvel's like, you know what? Ghost should be in this book. It's like, we got to scrap all this Lady in the Tramp stuff. Yeah, this isn't working out, guys. We're not going to show a touching relationship between a man and a robot. We're just going to show <laughs> Ghost Rider who is in here and he's like driving around doing deliveries. That's right. Well, here's the thing. So, so you know, the Deathlock's having his nightmares. He, he, he's having some stuff. He's going back and forth in his head yeah. and he's like kicking people's ass on the outside and then nightmare or uh, the ghost rider starts sh- shows up and well ghost rider actually when i say ghost rider i mean dan catch who is going on his little you know i guess he his, it says he's a delivery guy he's a delivery reason, guy he has like a, a cb radio in there so he can get like the cop scanner because he is because he is connected to the demons of Rathos. sure and, and he's he like, man, to- I can't stand up my girlfriend this time, which every comic book reader knows it means you're going to fuck it up again, I mean, bro. You're totally going to stand her up. Yeah, which is stupid uh, because you just fucking be honest with this chick because I'm sure if she was like, oh, you're a demon uh, where you had to catch it on fire and stuff. So that's kind of weird. But I think um, she knows. Right. But like, so why if you know, like if your head caught on fire on the regular because you had to turn into a demon. Uh, and that made you late for dinner. I'd probably understand that, right? Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. probably. I mean, obviously, you got some big priorities, and you're on fire for for a couple of, for like a good half hour. As yeah, you, I, you know, do vengeancey stuff. I would rather you take your burning head outside than in here, where it could like you know light our apartment on fire. Well, the the burning fire that uh, possesses um, what's his face Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider is, is it real fire. No, it's like hellfire, so it's cold. Mm, yeah, still creepy for me. I don't know if it catches things on fire. Well, though. it should. Uh, You'd think it would. Well, in that awesome Ghost Rider movie starring Nicolas Cage, it would like leave streaks of fire on the pavement. Well, because that's his car, yeah, or his, his bike. But... Right, but that, that caught the pavement on fire. Mm. 
I assume that's what was happening in that movie. I guess. Yeah, great. Anyway, so he's like, oh, no, I better go help this, because the cops have come to... Cops uh, finally show up. Stop Deathlock's rampage. And he's like, I better go help out. And so Deathlock sees the cops. He's like, you guys are terrible, because he's the Santa Claus robot from Futurama. Uh, and everybody's bad. So. Everybody has committed some sort of uh, hostility. Yes, so he has to take it out on them. So he's like, oh, I'm going to kick you, you guys in the face. Or whatever he does. And, like, Ghost Rider shows up. He's like, ha-ha, I'm Ghost Rider. Uh, or something along that. <laughs> the spirit of vengeance. I think he's like, ha-ha, Ghost Rider. I, I like that better than the spirit of vengeance. I feel the, the vengeance is played out for comic book characters. I think, ha-ha, I'm Ghost Rider is a better entrance line. Well, he sure comes in and, you know, and some kid gets slapped or something. So now that makes... Uh, oh, yeah. Like, something happens or I guess somebody... Ghost Rider's upset because he says that Deathlock has like drawn innocent blood and therefore he has to die. Right, because they got before. Because so, I mean, before the kids weren't doing innocent blood, but then so, you know, they weren't doing innocent blood. These guys that he was beating up, but some innocent kid got smacked. Hit or so, something. but you know what I don't understand? So like, Ghost Rider's possessed by a demon, right? Right. Like a why. Which usually would make one be like, sweet, you're killing innocents. That's awesome. Because you're a demon. Yeah. So why... He's a good demon, sort of. It makes sense. There's no such thing as a good demon. There is a good demon. It's Etrigan. He's a good demon. He, but he's a demon. That's the whole point of demon is that they are bad. They are evil and whatever. But, you you know, and angels are supposed to be good and demons are supposed to be bad. So you don't get like, oh, you know, he's he's a demon, but he's an OK guy. <laughs> yeah, no, he seems to be very uh, but like he, he's hell bent on doing good. Is he like like I don't know the backstory of that particular demon. So I don't know if he's like trying to get himself back into the good graces. I forgot, exactly, I forgot exactly how this ghost writer gets bonded to the spirit of uh, demon of uh no, of um. Actually, that's a good question. Yeah, because like, I wonder, it's like, well, if he's a you know, Vetrigan, for instance, like Etrigan, he's a demon. Yes, he is. And he's bonded to Jason Blood. Yes. And Jason Blood, he's forced to be bonded to Jason Blood. Yes. But is he just doing good shit because Jason Jason Blood's like, well, I'm gonna use you for good stuff, or the demon takes over and the demon's just like, well, I'm just gonna do what I want, you know? You know, kill kill real people because I don't like humanity yeah, so I'm a demon I don't know you mo- you know more about the demon than I do I'm not exactly I'm, sure I, well, I, this is, I just know that he's bonded and that they're, they're constantly well, yeah I don't know like if Jason Blood has any control over Etrigan when he's in you know in the form of Etrigan I right. don't actually know that answer so. I don't know I'll have, to, I'll have to look this up yeah. I probably should have been better off because our listeners are probably like oh you probably should know this blah, 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 you know so. yeah, I don't know this sorry guys but anyway, so go so Ghost Rider and Deathlock fight, and they have a very '90s fight with lots of explosions and chains and chains. Oh boy, chains! Because yeah. Ghost Rider is pretty much ninety percent chains. It's true, ninety percent. Like he's shooting, like like his chain links are flying all over the place. You know, that's pretty much like his big weapon is that like he just has this un unrelenting supply of chain links that yeah. shoot and, and he's got a flaming head and he rides a bike and he wears leather i have to say ghost rider as a character looks fucking cool yeah he really does he just looks fucking cool you're like yeah that's sweet but then like in practice i have found him less than cool he's kind of one note uh, yeah i think that's the thing it's like he, he looks so great so it's like well then you just assume that he's amazing all the time. I don't well, know. Especially but. in the nineties, because once, because what happened was in the, when the original ghost Rider was bonded to Johnny blaze, Johnny blaze is, uh, was a stunt cyclist. So right. there was a lot of that going on, you know, of his, of, you know, the, the stunt cycling and the, you know, the dare live daredevil lifestyle that was going on in between all that. Right. So, yeah, that was always kind of, you know, the part of it, but Dan catch is just some schlub. As far as I know, who just happened to be, you know, something happened where he, I think he happened to be in a graveyard at the wrong time and shit went down. And D- Ghost Rider 
saved his life uh-huh. by bonding with him. Or Zarathos as the demon. Right, right, right. So, anyways, uh, so they have this big 90s fight, and there's guns, and there's bullets. And there's this, like, dude with gritting their teeth at each other while they're kicking each other in the face. And, and there's just, a th- It's very 90s. And there's a thing here which... Giant splash page. Giant splash page. I don't know exactly what's going on here or what he's doing with his... Is he... He's, he's got his scratching ch- him. He's scratching him with his, his scratch. It says scratch, but he's hitting him with his chain. And he fucks up uh, Deathlock's programming. But is he like, like severing him, or is he um, just like shooting him in half? I don't know. Whatever. Because he- there's pieces of like just shards of something. I don't know. I I don't because he's in he's in one piece on the next page. So I don't know if this is uh, he just whatever he did. Bro- I'm assuming it broke parts of him, but I don't know what part. But it definitely fucked up his programming. Yeah, because he gets all, all these little and like stuff. green bubbles and starts saying error, 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 and like zero one one zero one one or whatever. So he fucks up his programming, and uh, hot dog guy is like, dude, no, this is my friend. You, you, there's an actual man inside of here. You, you, you yeah. can't just like. You know, well, because Ghost Rider wants because Ghost, Ghost Rider wants to use his pen and stare, which basically is like makes you catatonic. It just you know destroys you. Right. And he's like, don't no, don't do that. There's like my buddy inside there. You know, he's an actual person, and he's like, well, let me look. You know, or does he do it to Jesus? I think he, he throws he throws Jesus away and he goes for Deathlock. But uh, before we get to that, I want to talk about the January Cool Meter. Oh, I forgot about in the this Marvel thing. bullpen bullpen bulletin. Let's Which uh, well, it's, uh, it start uh, the first thing that's cool. Oh boy! Is non sexual harassment? Wait, wait. Yeah, because wait. I think this is since it's ninety two. This is probably around the time of like that Clarence Thomas. Right, but like so business. harassment. Basically, by saying non sexual harassment, you're saying harassment is okay right. as long as it's not sexual. As long as you keep it in your pants. As long as you don't make it sexual at all. It's okay to harass a fellow human being. Yes. Is that the message that Marvel Comics is sending to its readers? Yes. I mean, that has to be. I don't Wait. quite. I don't quite know why, but apparently it is. It Non-sexual harassment makes no sense. I mean, it does. It's just saying harassment that's not sexual, but it's that's not cool. Yeah. No, Whoever it's not. wrote this thing, it's fucking dude. Well, the 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 the, bull, bull, the, bell, the bull t- bulletins or whatever it's just a bunch of full it's just, just like a a big like jerk off session for like these these writers and these editors to put stuff in yeah but the, like that literally doesn't even make any sense i don't even and understand somehow that is much regular harassment is, it's much cooler than howard stern and well that's actually true and bro. tex-mex food and at the bottom i like tex-mex at the bottom that that is close to uncool actually i just noticed this what's uncool in this month close to uncool is squirrel girl which is probably you know if if, if this would be printed now oh man people would be nerds would be so pissed. upset tumblr would be furious yes because people love squirrel girl right and then right below that that's even more uncool is pregnant women on magazine covers no that must have been right when the demi moore cover came out Right, but we, 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 I don't know. That's because, like, I don't know. God forbid we show pregnant ladies. Yeah, it's just, it's. It's, That's what happens, guys, when you have sex with a lady. Like, sometimes. And you can take a picture of them, that's okay. And that, that, sometimes they get pregnant, and, like, that's what they look like. And you have to fucking deal with that because they're, like, incubating humans. So, you know. (sighs) Whatever. So, what else is on there? What, what else is on here? Let me see. Uh, we got political incorrectness, I think, is right in the middle. <sighs> like Bill Maher's show? No, like, oh. pedal, like, like just overall. Red this, Fox? I think Red Fox was... Was he dead? I was going to say, is he dead? No, he was still alive. Yeah, Margaret. He was still alive. I think he, was, he, he died. Oh, man, after. these people are so wrong. Planet Hollywood is up towards the top of the cool meter. Sumo wrestlers... Sumo wrestlers. Adverbs. <laughs> words. Good words. Scarlet. Oh, uncool. Scarlet, the sequel to Gone with the Wind. I'm actually going to agree with them on that because I have read both. Oh, you have? Uh, yeah. And oh, well, see, well, there they go. Well, they, they, obviously, so, yeah, they have the pulse of uh, 1992. Well, I guess if I was going to... Uh, because, yeah, Scarlet came out like decades later, not even by the same person. 
Um, so yeah, I'd probably have to say that it is not as cool as Gone with the Wind if you really want to power through a giant book. Um, so yeah, I guess they're right in that instance. <laughs> So anyway. Good job, Marvel Bullpen. Anyways. Yeah. Good job for getting one of, what, 20? Right. <laughs> so, these geeks. So anyways, so, uh, whatever, Hot Dog Boy gets tossed away. Yeah, and so he goes to, like, give the stare to um, Deathlock, and he's like, wait a second, there's no soul in this machine. And then that's when Nightmare comes out and, like, grabs Ghost Rider's face. He's like, hey oh, I'm here. Yeah, I and think he it. actually does say hey oh. Yo, surprise, grab. Woo! And so then we end Yank. the end. And that's... That's Deathlock, number nine, volume two. I think it's volume one. I don't know why it matters the volume. It doesn't matter. I don't know. It's, from 90, yeah. it's 1992 or whatever. Well, since here's the thing. I have, I have my stuff separated special, differently according to what it says on the Marvel Wiki. Yes. So this is technically volume two. But whatever. It's Deathlock number nine from March 1992. Yep. It, that, that's the thing we just read. So maybe you've got a great idea for a business and want to start selling your products or services online. Maybe you're an established business owner looking for new customers. Or maybe you're interested in starting a personal website. No matter who you are, GoDaddy wants to help you succeed online. Right now, GoDaddy is offering a .com domain for just $1.49. It's go time. Start your website today. Visit GoDaddy.com and enter promo code COMICS149. That's COMICS149 to get your $1.49.com. Some limitations apply. See website for details. Okay, we're back. What? I just... Uh, so... As always, not as always, but perhaps as usual, we have wrestling playing in the background. Sean is a huge wrestling fan. So we have the WWE Network on mute in the background. And I just don't understand John Cena. What's that to understand about him? He's just like a square head and like, I don't know. I don't quite understand like, why it is that everybody still thinks that he's cool. Well, that's the thing. Even though like, he dresses like, he... A 12, like a 12-year-old boy. Yeah. That, like... that 12-year-old boys don't even dress like him. Well, that's the thing. Like, he dresses like, like a 12-year-old boy from, like... 1991. Yeah. Like, when he was a 12-year-old boy. Because he's what? Like, our age? Roughly, yeah. Roughly. Okay. So, 1992-ish? 1993-ish? Like, yeah. He does dress like a... 12 year old boy from the 90s but like what i don't understand like the rock called him a packet of skittles and i think that was fruity pebbles fruity pebbles but like he's has he ever gone heel ever he was a heel in the very beginning of his career but ever since he you know turned into rapper hat john cena who wears jorts jorts john cena he's always been a good guy he's probably been a good guy since like 2004 i was gonna say and that's been a really really long time do you think he's ever gonna go heal unless if they ever i feel like he needs to at this point he would know he would he it would make sense if he did but if that they need someone to be as big of a baby face and a merchandise seller and a face of the company as he is because that is basically his main thing is that he is able to represent the company on like the highest level like he's the face of the company Mm -hmm. and there is nobody that at this point that wf has a wb has allowed to roll into that position and you know make it more sense that if he were to go heel that you know that they would be able to still make as much money with somebody else do you think he would want to go heel he probably does but i I mean that would just be a natural evolution because he's been playing the same like it's basically the same character he's been doing since fucking forever right well, that, right, that's got to be boring, right? Well, it doesn't I mean it's boring, but WWE is not known for innovation. Know, innov- I mean, they are, but they're not. You know, no, they not. Just, they take their time. You know, on big events and switching to, you know, switching around stuff and whatever. They don't really feel that is necessary unless if they just want to make continue to make money and just live the status quo, which is essentially what they're doing with you know John Cena. So okay, why does it that people bring babies to autograph? I was signings? just gonna say that guy almost dropped his baby. I would never. I would. I would. Good fucking job there, uh, new dad. New dad. If you're a new dad, <laughs> and you're also the, if you're baby a dad, on a wrestler, bring your kid. If you're, yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't bring your newborn kid. The kid's not gonna appreciate it. It's like it's like you met some steroid man back in nineteen or two thousand fourteen. I almost dropped. And you I almost dropped you. I'm a great man. dad. 
<laughs> Let me tell you about the time I almost killed you by dropping you on a wrestler. <laughs> Happy family memory. Uh, Ouch. <laughs> oh, wrestling. Anyways, so... Uh, yeah, make me laugh. That's too funny. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. All right. We should probably stop, stop talking about wrestling and actually talk about a comic book. Um, so, Green Arrow... Yeah. All right. DC. Green Arrow volume. Something. Whatever. Let's just forget the volume stuff. Fuck it. Uh, volume. It's in the 90s. So it's Green Arrow, Green Arrow, Green Arrow 90. Uh, number 86 from May 1994. And this is uh, Green Arrow with his goatee, which I always appreciate. I like his goatee. He's always had a goatee. I know, but like now he doesn't. Like in the current run. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then I guess I haven't paying attention. Yeah, he's kind of. I, I don't think he does. I think he looks more like the guy on TV. Oh well, probably because they want to make sure the Could dynamics and stuff. Era. But because I kind of like his goatee, I've always thought it was fun. Yeah, yeah. no, he's, he's he's got he's got the so it's it's um so it's Ollie with his goatee, mm-hmm. and he is uh this is this the whole premise of this book is that something to do with. Him and Catwoman. Yeah. Well, Catwoman guest stars in this book. She shows up, and on the cover, she looks Catwoman-esque. Uh, <laughs> Are we having an issue? Uh-huh. Stop it. Honey. Don't. <laughs> Please, do you want a podcast? you want to be on the podcast? No, he doesn't. Oh, cats. So, um, yeah, she basically just looks like a naked lady painted purple. Well, because it's '90s Catwoman. That's pretty much what she was. What she um, was back in the day. So, yeah. so she's there and shows. But basically, the premise starts off with Green Arrow re- recalling he's in the middle of a fight. Yes. With two guys, or a bunch of guys that are trying to rough up a museum curator. Yep. And Green Arrow just happens. To, he's in Dallas because he's kind of um, on a. I don't really know what's going on with him. This is a Crossroads book. So basically what happens here is, is Dinah breaks up. A uh, basic summary of the Crossroads arc is that Dinah breaks up with Ollie after she catches him smooching on another woman. And then there's like a big fight between Nuclon and Shrapnel and Green Arrow intervenes. But there's a huge fucking mess afterward. And he's like, you know what? I'm out. Fuck this shit. So he's kind of like lost. Wait, so he's making out with Nuclon? I missed it. No, no. no. Yes. Uh, Ollie's making out with Nuclon and Dynam's like, dude, what the fuck? No, she catches him kissing another woman. So they break up. And then there's a huge superhuman conflict between Nuclon and Shrapnel. And he intervenes and controls it, but there's a huge fucking mess afterward. And he's like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm out. I'm go. I'm leaving Seattle. Who's Shrapnel? I have no idea. Sounds like uh, a jerk. Yeah. So he's like, fuck it, I'm out. I, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to leave. So he's been like wandering across the country. So right now he's in Dallas and he just happened to be like, like he's got a bunch of winnings, I guess, because he went to Vegas. Was he playing slot machines? He won. I assume so. Yeah. Uh, he was playing penny slots. And so he's got about 150 bucks. Because <laughs> he hit the jackpot. <laughs> So he like goes to Dallas and he checks into a hotel room and he's like, awesome. Well, I'm going to go look at these old weapons at this museum. And he goes and as he's standing there, he just sees three uh, heavy heavies, quote. Yeah, just a bunch of, you know, yeah, just a bunch of, uh, bunch of. Run into like a back room and he's like, that's not right. I'm going to follow them because, you know, that's what superheroes do. And he wouldn't have a story if he didn't do that. Yeah, he's just got, he's just doing whatever so, he feels like it, yeah. you know, because he he needs some adventure, you know. He, he just got done, he just got caught making he's out with like, Nuclon, so. Right, and he's like, dude, I keep this goatee, like, awesomely styled so people can appreciate it. And so if I don't run after these people, no one will see my goatee. So he, like, runs down, and he's like, oh, stop trying to rough up So he's just going to show them his goatee? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. He's like, "Uh, hey, guys, look at my goatee. Oh, wait, you guys are roughing up this poor curator. I'll step in and start fighting. So he starts, like, beating people with uh, fossils, which I'm sure the museum is thrilled with. And he literally just knocks down all these bones. Yeah, this is literally just like he's, he's, he's being sure thrown just... into all these bones. And these bones are like, I guess, since they're stone fossils, yeah, they're, they're like fossils. super heavy and shit. And... Which, they're also extremely fragile. And he would have broken so many priceless specimens by doing that. But whatever. Uh, 
it's fine. So he like throws bones at people's heads, and they're like, "Oh, we got to run," and they leave. So the heavy guys leave, and <laughs> and he's like, "Hey there, curator, who you've never uh, we've never met before, what's going on?" And the curator, of course, tells him what's going on. He's like, "Oh, uh, I'm." Does he even kind of like come out to like make it as if like he's like I'm Green Arrow or I'm some guy? No, he's just like I'm some guy. He doesn't even tell who he is. He's just like, hey, I can help you. Don't ask me why. It's because I could like throw fossil bones at people's heads and make them. Run I got away. no regard for anything in this museum. Can I help you? Yeah. Can, instead of calling the police like you should, how about you just let me in on all your personal business? <laughs> because I just happen to be some dude who walked down the wrong door at the right time. And the curator's like, oh, that's great. Uh, what a good idea. I will totally tell you the entire story about how I'm trying to find these, like, Incan figures from a friend of mine. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, there's a, yeah the whole Incan thing. Just like, Yeah, that, I'm just like, okay. So I guess there's, like, Incan figures and, like, he – Apparently – Some guy is selling what he says are replica Incan figures but in the guy, story, but the curator says they're real. Curator's like, they're real, and there's no way that you could have got them. Man. Right. And so, like – uh. His friend sends his heavies to rough up this curator because he happens to see the fake, the the, the real things, and so he's like, yeah. "Well, you gotta get your ass kicked now, yeah, because you know what this stuff is and right, whatever." And, it's and just he's like, like, instead of like calling the cops and telling him what is going on, that there's like all these like forged antiquities or real antiquities being sold as fakes or whatever. Uh, he just goes, "Okay, well, thanks, random dude with a goatee. You can totally help me." With this, I like I like that this curator kind of looks like Green Arrow, but yeah, like with like with white a, hair, with white hair and a dark goatee, because that's how everybody looked. Like it just, it, you know, just, it just you know, this book reeks. This book reeks of like, like a like a <laughs> shitty like action movie on Cinemax. Yeah, actually, it kind of turns into that. It totally turns into that. <laughs> so he's like, all right, cool. So he's like, goes to the shop. And he's about to break in, and of course, guess who shows up? It's Catwoman. Catwo. Catwo. So she shows up, and she's like, "Hey, you!" And then they start swanting each other. Swant. Swant. <laughs> swant. Uh, you and, swat. And so now they're trying to like strangle each other, and somehow have a conversation through uh, collapsed windpipes. There's a lot of like, references to her to to Ollie's groin. Yeah, like something about like he's like he's like let's stop gr- throttling our groins or something. Yeah, she she keeps threatening to get you in the groin. Uh, Pretty much, like which I would assume that like these dudes were cups, right? Like I don't know. Well, maybe he's got some sort of armor or something, some sort of chain mail. But you know, I mean, he probably knows that. You know, Selena knows how to give a good punt to the nuts. Well, as she should. You know, she's from Gotham. Man. She's from Gotham. That's, that's pretty. That's pretty much like. You know. That's all you do in Gotham. You just walk around and kick people in the nuts or stab yourself in the eye with a spoon <laughs> <laughs> uh, like Fish Moody. Um, anyway, so they're like, why don't we team up? Because she says she's trying to like steal these artifacts back for the uh, Peruvian government. And uh, they're like, okay, well, why don't we team up together? That, But we we have to make sure we don't leave each other's sight for the next day. So they go to this hotel, to his hotel. Yes. Do they fuck? They totally fuck. They have to, but I mean, like, you know. Because there's, there's this thing. Okay, so there's this thing where it's they're. like, hotel, and they're in there all day. She says something like, we could stop choking each other, and I got to keep an eye on you, never leave each other's sight. Yeah. And I don't understand what the next stuff. It's, it's something about, like, oh, the maid didn't notice the hundred dollar bill I left under my pillow but like that's okay the pillow's all right and like it's just like two panels one of like the hotel at night one uh, at dusk but then the next thing where you know it's it's green arrow thinking yeah and he's like yeah night again I can't stop grinning but she's all business right so I'm assuming that they just like had crazy sexy rhombus sex uh, all day long, and now she's like, forget it, and he's all like, yeah, like thumbs up. Like I'm assuming they fucked, right? They totally, they totally did. I'm sorry, but they totally, there's totally hey, good for her. some banging. You know, Get she it. she's like, you know, Bruce ain't doing nothing. Bruce, at this time, Bruce <laughs> is, is I think dead at this point. I don't even know. No, it was ninety four, so this is like when uh, Azrael's flying around. You know, I think Bruce is still well, his back is broken. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so he's, he's got to get it somewhere. Yeah. 
So she goes to fuck Ollie, which good for her. I mean, whatever. Maybe Ollie's great in bed. I don't know. So she's well, he's got kept, he's kept, for, date, kept Diana around for all those I was years. Say, she's got a thing for like costumed uh, billionaires. But, you know, it just could be worse types, I suppose. So she, I don't know. They drive in and he's like, okay, we're going to go get this thing. And there's there's a deal going on with like the heavies. And like the guy who owns the shop. They're trying to get a sun dial or sun disc. Or yeah, something. some other uh, artifact or whatever. It's just... But oh, guess what? The curator's evil. And he's actually trying to steal all this stuff. Couldn't have seen that coming. No, you didn't see that coming at all. You know, with his white Cinemax porn beard. Right. Or his white hair and his black Cinemax porn beard. Yeah, his evil goatee. Yeah. And so, like, all he's like, oh, I'll open this safe. And he's such a fucking idiot that he doesn't actually, like, try to crack it. He just tries to open it. And, of course, the alarm goes off uh, because he's terrible. (laughs) And she's like, well, what's wrong with you? And he's like, I think it's "Mm." funny that in a lot of books, like, Anytime that like Wonder Woman or you know Catwoman's like in a book, like the males are just such idiots. Yep, isn't that kind of like the standard? You know, sometimes it feels like I it mean, feels like that. Well, he's just an idiot because I don't understand like why he would attempt to open this safe when you have like the world's best thief standing beside you. Wouldn't you just be like, "That's you"? Stand I'll... aside, let a man fuck this up. That's right, what he said. Like, wouldn't you be like, "You do that, I'll provide cover with my insane aim." Yeah. With my arrows, right? No, no. No, he does it. Fucks it up. Uh, I don't know what he's trying to prove if they've already fucked. Like, what the hell is pro- his thing is? But anyway, so she's like, oh, you're such an ass. So they start fighting uh, these dudes who are coming in. And he's like, you know, she's trying to break into the safe. She breaks into the safe, whatever. And they run out. And, and uh, Yeah, so they run out. And they try to get away. Does he shoot this guy in the mouth? That's what I was actually thinking, too. It's like because like, he's, he's, stra- he's, stra- he's straight up killing dudes, right? Like that would kill people, wouldn't it? He shoots a guy in the mouth, and, then, and later on in the in the van when they're chasing after the the the, the disc. Oh yeah, he, he shoots him like right in the fucking stomach. Yeah, he straight up shoots that dude with an arrow, you know. And it's like, but I mean, yeah, he shot the guy in the mouth and like pinned him to the to wall. the wall. Yeah, like a maniac. Yeah, because that would have absolutely killed him. Like, this one, he shot him through the shoulder. I could say, like, oh, okay, he probably survived that. That is an arrow going into a dude's mouth. Clearly, yes. You won't survive. Well, he was, he was complaining about, like, how he got you got into a fight earlier with those guys, and they split his lip. So now he's he's so getting back he, at him by, by basically... Arrow to the mouth. Arrow to the throat. <laughs> you know, just straight up destroying these people. Sure. And, of course, like, one of the guys had driven into this, like, little meetup on a Ferrari... So they steal it, um, and she, a Catwoman's driving, so she's after the van, she, she's trying to get this sun disc from the curator, and there's a hole in the middle of the sun disc, and Ollie shoots him right through it in, into the stomach, and he, like, is shot so hard, he literally flies into the driver. Ugh. Uh, yeah. yeah, so then he gets the sun disc, and he gives it to Catwoman, and she speeds off. We well, didn't give us a gun. She just takes it. She just like drives away and goes yoink. Yeah, and yoink, she's like mine. She's like, later, later, fucker. Uh, I'm gonna go get my own reward money. And so then, then he's back in his hotel room, and he calls the Peruvian government. Yeah, maybe clarify what's going on here. Okay, so like, Catwoman says that she's trying to steal these artifacts back and return them to the Peruvian government. That's who she's under contract with, and that's why she's trying to steal these artifacts in the first place. So, the next morning, Ollie is in the hotel wearing nothing but a tiny little towel, which is very nice. <laughs> look at that tiny little towel. Oh, yeah, yeah. he's just walking around in a little loin, little, loin cloth. little loincloth. And um, so he... <laughs> calls the Peruvian government and somehow gets the right person <laughs> on the phone and says, I'm assisting a certain feline female. And and the person on the other end of the phone goes, oh, yes, did you secure our figurines? Because he's trying to figure out if she was telling the truth. But, like, 
how do you call the Peruvian government and have them admit to contracting a thief to steal their shit back? Just, just answer, yeah, no, just, just whoever random person calls and he just asks. And they're just aware of this operation and they're like, oh yeah, I'll tell you over the phone what's going on. It's totally cool. I assume it's because he's a, um, he's a superhero. Sure. And they have connections all the time and, and, and the situation called for it. I'm sure Batman. Maybe he just got a, maybe maybe we don't see all of these maybe all the we, people he was getting connected to and he was just getting pissed off. Yeah, maybe he's actually been on the phone for like maybe this isn't the next day. Maybe this is like a week later and he's been on hold. And he's wearing the same loincloth. He was pissed off. He's like I'm so angry I'm naked. <laughs> so angry. I'm so naked. angry that I'm naked. So then he's like, "Oh, maybe she was telling the truth." Then he's like, "Well, Dallas really isn't for me." I'm going to go to, where does he go? New Orleans? New Orleans. Yeah, he goes to New Orleans because. Because I like gumbo. Gumbo, and then he probably goes to New Orleans and probably. The end. Runs into somebody. That's the end of that story. All right. Well, yeah, well, they totally banged. No, they totally fucked. Yeah, that was a thing they did. That was a thing that they did. They had the sex. No wonder Batman and Green Arrow don't get along that well. Yeah, dude. They're Eskimo well, brothers, that's why. Well, shit. I mean, he Batman has no fucking leg to stand on. He fucks everything that moves, so she's going to no, get a right. little good for her. Yeah. Uh, yeah he just... can't fucking complain. So, f- fuck you, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was fuck you, Batman sex. <laughs> Maybe this is like, I'll show you, I'm going to fuck your friend. <laughs> that's what you get for running off and having sex with Talia, because you're an idiot. <laughs> I love how a lot of our, ba- our 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 podcasts devolve into like just talks of Bat- the, the Batman's stupid cock, Batman's stupid cock sessions or whatever. <laughs> Anyways, that's uh, this week's show. Ow. Jenna's uh, needs to recover, so oh, go recover. wish her well. You can find her on Twitter. Oh yeah, at Jen Stansfield uh, on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Jen Stansfield dot Tumblr dot com. Um, jenstansfield.wordpress.com and I promise I'm going to try to review that Gotham uh, episode from last week. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance because I was having surgery, but I will get there. Cool. And I am on Instagram and Twitter at AngryHeroSean and my Tumblr is TheAngryHero.tumblr.com and thank you all for listening. We will see you next week. Bye. Bye.